Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about autoimmune gastritis. In my previous video I discussed about gastritis caused by H. pylori. Now autoimmune gastritis, it accounts for less than 10% of the cases of chronic gastritis. Whereas majority of the cases they are due to helicobacter pylori. Now discussing about the autoimmune gastritis, the correct thing thing is that there is loss of the parietal cells. And these parietal cells, if you remember, they are responsible for the secretion of gastric acid and intrinsic factor. Now further, due to absence of the acid production, it leads to stimulation of gastrin release. Therefore, there will be hypergastrinemia and also hyperplasia of gastrin producing G cells. Therefore, these two characteristics, achlorhydria and hypergastrinemia are seen in autoimmune gastritis. Further, now lack of intrinsic factor. This disables vitamin B12 absorption because it is required for it. Therefore, leading to further vitamin B12 deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency leads to megaloblastic anemia and a specific type of megaloblastic anemia due to deficiency of intrinsic factor is known as pernicious anemia. Now going to further, we will discuss just the characteristics now. Revising the characteristics, uh, it is characterized by loss of parietal cells and therefore there is loss of intrinsic factor, there is achlorhydria because of no acid production, there is reduced pepsinogen concentration, there is increased gastrin production and also there is vitamin B12 deficiency. These are the characteristics of autoimmune gastritis. Now going to the pathogenesis. Now earlier it was thought that there, there are autoantibodies uh, to the parietal cell, to the proton pump or to the intrinsic factor. They are responsible for the pathogenesis. These are also responsible for the pathogenesis. Also responsible are the CD4 T cells. The CD4 T cells, they attack the parietal cell components including the proton pump and these are the principal agents of injury in case of autoimmune gastritis. Now going to the morphology. Now in the morphology, we will discuss that uh, autoimmune gastritis, it is characterized by diffuse mucosal damage of the mucosa of the body and the fundus of the stomach. Now there are parts of the stomach, there is a part, there is fundus, there is body, there is cardia, there is entrum. Uh, in this case, mostly body and fundus is involved. The damage to the antrum and the cardia, they are typically absent or they are very mild. Now, uh, we understood that there is diffuse mucosal damage. Further, what happens is there is diffuse atrophy. Because of the uh, damage, there is atrophy and the mucosa of the body and the fundus it appears markedly thinned out and the rugal folds which are present they are lost and if the vitamin b12 deficiency is severe which happens late in the course of the disease we can also see nuclear enlargement uh, that is known as megaloblastic change that occurs within the epithelial cells. The megaloblastic change it can both be seen in the red blood cells, it can also be seen in the epithelial cells of the stomach. And then there is inflammatory infiltrate which is present. Now the inflammatory infiltrate uh, which is present in the autoimmune gastritis is mostly lymphocytes, there are macrophages, there are plasma cells there is a less number of presence of the neutrophils. The lymphocytes can be so much so that the lymphoid aggregates may be present. Also in contrast to the H. pylori gastritis, in that we studied that there are presence of superficial, uh, in the superficial lamina propria, there are plasma cells which are present. Now in this case, 
the plasma cells and the lymphocytes which are present they are mostly present deep and they are centered on the gastric glands they are not present in the superficial lamina propria uh, this is the picture in this picture we can see that uh, over here we can see dense lymphoid infiltrate which can be seen okay and the glandular atrophy can also be seen there is a uh, characteristic glandular atrophy is present in this now going to the clinical course now clinical course uh, in this case more women are affected than men like in every uh, autoimmune disease we see mostly women are mostly affected than men now the antibodies to parietal cells and intrinsic factor they can be seen early in the disease course however these antibodies are present but the gastric atrophy uh, probably occurs over two to three decades and the anemia the megaloblastic anemia it can be seen late in the course and also in very few patients because the onset the course that is very slow and has a very variable progression the patients they are generally diagnosed after being affected for many years and the median age for the diagnosis is around 60 years now uh, these uh, uh, the autoimmune gastritis it is often associated with other autoimmune diseases also uh, always autoimmune uh, diseases they are associated with each other now the autoimmune diseases uh, including like Hashimoto thyroiditis type 1 diabetes mellitus Edison disease Graves disease misthenia gravis they are also associated with this going to the clinical presentation we already studied the course is very slow and uh, the patient presents at a very late age and also the clinical presentation can also be in the form of vitamin b12 deficiency because vitamin b12 deficiency can cause many other symptoms like it can cause atrophic glossitis sorry in which the tongue becomes very smooth and beefy red and also it can lead to peripheral neuropathy which can present as paresthesias and numbness of the fingers also it can lead to spinal lesions in which there is loss of vibration and position sense there is limb weakness there is spasticity there can be cerebral manifestations associated in which there is uh, mild personality changes there can be memory loss this all can occur but important thing to note is that the neurological symptoms they are not reversed by vitamin b12 Defic uh, replacement therapy however the anemia can be corrected lastly going to the very important part that is the difference between H. pylori associated gastritis and autoimmune gastritis firstly the H. pylori associated gastritis mostly involves the antrum whereas the autoimmune involves the body the inflammatory infiltrate is uh, neutrophils along with the plasma cells that are also superficial here the uh, mostly lymphocytes are predominant the ACE production very importantly here is increased or it can be hypochlorhydria it can be slightly decreased along with it the gastrin is mostly decreased however here it is acid production is decreased and the gastrin production is increased there is a chlorhydria along with hypergastrinemia other lesions ca polyps can be associated here there is neuroendocrine hyperplasia here in the serology we can find antibodies to h pylori however here there are antibodies to the parietal cells the sequelae are almost the same there is ulcer this adenocarcinoma here the sequelae are um, there is atrophy, there is pernicious anemia, also adenocarcinoma can be seen. However, the associations, this associates with low socioeconomic status, poverty. However, here it is associated with other autoimmune diseases. Hope this, uh, 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 you like this. Please, uh, if you like this video, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video.